we are asked to describe the transformation in graph y equals three times cosecant of the quantity two x minus pi minus two. We will describe the transformation with the equation in the form of y equals a times cosecant of the quantity bx plus c plus d. Notice a is equal to three. When graphing sine and cosine, the absolute value of a is equal to the amplitude, but remember the cosecant function has no amplitude. So let's go ahead and make a note that a is equal to three but the given cosecant function has no amplitude. And now let's find the period which is equal to two pi divided by b, and notice in our equation b is equal to two. So two pi divided by b is equal to two pi divided by two, which is equal to pi. So the period is equal to pi. And now let's find the phase shift, which is equal to negative c divided by b, where b is two, and c is negative pi. So negative c divided by b is equal to negative, and then again c is negative pi, so we have the opposite of negative pi divided by b, which is two, which gives us positive pi over two, which means the phase shift or horizontal shift is right pi over two units. And then finally notice d is negative two, the constant on the end, because d is negative two, the graph is shifted down two units. So this describes the transformation of the given cosecant function, but because cosecant theta and sine theta are reciprocals of one another, when graphing a cosecant function, it's helpful to graph the corresponding sine function because of the relationship between the two graphs. Notice how where the sine function is at the midline, the corresponding cosecant function has a vertical asymptote. Also notice how the maximum values of the sine function are also points on the corresponding cosecant function. And finally, where sine is concave down, cosecant is concave up, and where sine is concave up, cosecant is concave down. Using these relationships will help us make a nice graph of the given cosecant function by graphing the corresponding sine function, which is y equals three times the sine of the quantity two x minus pi minus two. So let's begin by sketching the sine function that has the same transformations shown here, except now for the sine function, the amplitude is equal to the absolute value of three or three, and because A is positive, there is no reflection across the midline. So let's first sketch the midline because the graph is shifted down two units, the midline is y equals negative two. So this is the midline. The graph is shifted right pi over two units. So let's go ahead and say this is pi over two. Because the period is equal to pi radians, pi over two or one half pi plus pi gives us three halves pi or three pi over two, which let's say is here. So we'll have one complete graph of the sine function starting at pi over two and ending at three pi over two. So now let's divide this into four equal subintervals, here, here, and here. And because the period is pi, pi divided by four is equal to pi over four. These are increments of pi over four. So one half pi plus one fourth pi is three fourths pi, or three pi over four, plus one fourth pi is four fourths pi or pi, and then pi plus one fourth pi is five pi over four, and then we have three pi over two. So we'll start graphing the sine function here, and we'll have one complete period over this interval. Let's also label the x-axis moving to the left. So here we'd have pi over four, zero, negative pi over four, and then negative pi over two. Because the midline is y equals negative two, and the amplitude is three, negative two plus three is positive one. This will be the maximum sine function value and then negative two minus three is equal to negative five. This will be the minimum sine function value. And now following the basic pattern for the sine function, which if the period is divided into four equal subintervals is midline, maximum, midline, minimum, midline, we will graph the given sine function over this interval. So we start at the midline, which is this point here, and then we're up at a maximum then back down to the midline, then down to a minimum, and back to the midline. 
So the graph of the red sine function over this interval looks like this. Continuing the graph to the left, at x equals pi over four, we'd be down at a minimum. X equals zero, we'd be back to the midline. And then moving to the left, we would be back up at a maximum, and then finally back down to the midline. Let's go ahead and sketch this part of the graph as well. Now that we have a nice graph of the corresponding sine function, again, wherever the sine function value is at the midline, the given cosecant function will have a vertical asymptote. Let's sketch the vertical asymptotes. X equals negative pi over two, x equals zero, x equals positive pi over two, x equals pi, and x equals three pi over two. And now to graph the given cosecant function, the max and min sine function values are also points on the given cosecant function. And where the sine function is concave down, the given cosecant function is concave up. And where the sine function is concave up, the given cosecant function is concave down. And we know the pieces will approach the vertical asymptotes. So here's one piece of the given cosecant function. Here's another. Here's another, and here's another. So the blue graph is our final graph of the given cosecant function. Let's highlight this part of the graph. I hope you found this helpful.